Hey everybody, so pleased to be with you here today again for another Medical Monday. I'm Dr. Hammerstedt, Emergency Medicine, Integrative Nutrition and Health Coach. I have a telemedicine rock star here to talk to you today, Dr. Letitia Rowe. First, let me frame the issue though, the issue of hand and medicine that we have right now by reminding you to go to the Medical Monday I did a few weeks ago in the videos portion of the Holis Facebook. It's the featured video today and I, it has gotten over 6,700 views so it struck a chord for many for sure. I'll link to it in the comments as well but basically the medical system has really lost track of the important part of what this issue all is which is the relationship between the doctor and the patient and so the health of the patient really is dependent on that relationship, having the time to be able to get in and take care of people to really get to the heart of the issue um, really involves a lot of things that we have lost. And so I have a ton of ideas on how to fix this, but creating a space for physician autonomy and wellness so that there is time to create that relationship with the patient is really the core of the issue and is certainly a big one. So while we wait to get Dr. Rowe on here, I'll just remind you quickly that Holis specializes in integrative care coordination, bringing practitioners across the spectrum of care for you. And we have a new weight wellness program that's coming up in a few weeks. It's the same podcast with daily information, but with new personal coaches, new edition of a meditation guide, hypnotherapist, and a life coach, and you recreating your relationship with food and getting back to the body and mind you want. And so while we're waiting for Dr. Rowe to join us, I do have a couple more things I wanted to frame for you. So listen, um, your doctor has taken their entire lives to learn how to take care of you. Um, the doctors want to make you better. How can we form a relationship together to make that happen? Well, um, telemedicine is one way, which is the opportunity to be able to communicate with and get your doctor um, really on your terms. So is that on your phone? You know, what is that? Oh, hi, Tisha. She is you here, Dr. Tisha Rowe. She is the founder and CEO of Rowe Docs, which is a uh, national uh, organization and company that has, hi, how are you? Welcome. Great. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I was just introducing Rodox, but you know what? You are a better person to do that than I. And so I was just telling how, everyone how excited I am to have this rock star telemedicine businesswoman here to talk to us about what telemedicine is. So can you tell me a little bit about Rodox and like oh my what God. collection of docs are? Yes. Thanks so much for the opportunity to be able to share with the Holist family as you know, I'm a huge supporter and I just love what you're doing. It's so creative, it's so innovative. And really that's what Rodox is all about. I started Rodox um, four years ago now in 2014 with the idea of physician empowerment. We are a telemedicine company and a telemedicine network, which means our common thread of all of our doctors is we give our patients the option to see us wherever they want. That could be at home, that can be while traveling, that can be on the phone. But really what it's about is showing physicians like you that if you have something that you're passionate about, something that you really want to do, don't wait for someone to create that opportunity for you. Create it for yourself. We live in the age of social media. Patients are out there. They're looking for good doctors. They're looking for quality care. You just have to make yourself available to reach them. Yeah. And it, I mean, so it's really, I think, an opportunity to revolutionize our healthcare system. What I was just talking about before you join me is like, we need to be able to create the space for the patient and the doctor to become the center of the health system again. And I think telemedicine really is an opportunity to do that. So how did you get to this idea? You know, you're a family medicine physician, you have an MBA, like what brought you to this? So one of my favorite things that anyone who knows me is social media. So at the time I was working in urgent care and I would get like screamed at, called names, all different things because someone couldn't get a Z-Pack. And I was yeah. like, oh 
my God, this is not what I went to medical school for. At the same time, through social media, I was able to connect with people who really wanted my help and really wanted to connect with me about the things I was passionate about, which is health and fitness, which is weight loss, which is eating right. And so that's how I stumbled um, upon the idea of creating a network for doctors to utilize social media and the internet and technology, which is telemedicine, to be able to take better care of their patients. So it found me. Yeah. So explain a little bit to our viewers who may not be in the health um, spectrum about kind of what does the word telemedicine mean and what does it mean for a patient to really be able to access and what can they use us for? You know, I, I am an Apple user and I will go into the Apple store and say, hey, when can you make FaceTime HIPAA compliant? And yeah. I would say for the everyday person, when you hear telemedicine, think FaceTime my doctor, because that's what it is. The only difference yeah. between what we do as telemedicine and FaceTime is that we have an extra layer of protection to protect your privacy. We don't want some who knows who hacking into our conversation, getting your private information and doing who knows what with it. So that yeah. fancy big word telemedicine is really just FaceTime, but with an extra layer of protection. Yeah, great, good. And so what kind of things, you know, often people are like, well, how can my doctor take care of me on uh, my phone or on my computer? So what kind of things like are perfect telemedicine, you know, client or patient concerns that we can address? So I would say when it comes to telemedicine, because I've done it so long, um, for four years now, I'm really liberal with what I will do. And I'll explain to you why. I will do anything that is not a true emergency via telemedicine. And the reason is that everyone's heard the story. Someone was sitting in their house, they had a heart attack all alone. And in my mind, as a medical doctor, if I could have had a conversation with that person and let them know this is not heartburn, you actually need to go and get help or you are having a stroke right now. You live alone, so you didn't see that facial droop, but I see it. Get out of there, go get help. Um, so there's so many uses for it. But if I had to say the top reasons that I recommend and I find telemedicine helpful, number one will be medication refills. We're trying to get our nation healthier and better. And I see everyone doing this. They get on their medicine, they run out, their doctor's office is inefficient, so it takes them 30 days to get back in. They're out of medicine, their numbers are sucking again. They get mm -hmm. back on medicine, oh, a little bit better. Oh, I ran out and I was busy. So they're doing this, they're yo-yoing yeah. with their health because of a access problem. Not that we're in the country or something, but the good doctors are really busy, you know? Um, and you can be a good doctor and not be busy, but it solves that problem. So number one will be medication refills. Do not run out of your medicine. Even if you have a doctor, you can utilize Rodox as a backup, get your refill and schedule with your doctor. The other thing, which is what you're doing and you know I love is really for people to focus on prevention. It really um, bothers me when I get people when they're so sick that all I'm doing is correcting a problem. We shouldn't operate this way. You should be right. talking to a doctor before you're sick. We want to create a community where college students want to talk to you and I on the computer. Well, guess yeah. what? They don't want to go sit in a doctor's office for two hours, Neither do fill I. out a ton of paperwork. <laughs> You know, how could we possibly blame them for not wanting to go to the doctor? But if it yeah. was like this, you know, oh, we can just chat like FaceTime? Absolutely. In 20 yeah. years from now, we will have a healthier nation. Now, yeah. the reason that most people use it today, which is a great reason to use it too, is for acute care, right? Oh, I'm sick. I have a cold. I want to talk to a doctor, which may not seem like a really big deal. But everyone complains about the cost of insurance. Use yeah. telemedicine over urgent care. All of our health insurance prices will go down because it's mm -hmm. way cheaper than an urgent care visit. And the cost of health care is what drives the cost of your insurance. The yeah. other reason it's so good for acute care is we create the sickness, right? I have the flu. 
I come to your office for you mm-hmm. to check me for the flu, which God knows it's flu season. You have a fever, you have a headache. I know you have the flu, but since I made you come into my office, the other five people who didn't right. have the flu, they just got the flu and they'll be next back next week. And so it yeah. creates this repetitive cycle that we could so easily break if we would just say, hey, guys, you know, um, you don't have to come in. I don't need a test to prove what my medical knowledge and I already know. And I'm I'm sorry, but a lot of the testing that we do is not really because we need to do the test. That's just how we were programmed, right? Which comes back to someone gets to charge for that test. Someone gets a higher level of service for that test. And there's so many times where we don't need it and we do it reflexively. So I think telemedicine forces me to be a better doctor. Yeah. Well, but with Rodox, you also have the opportunity to do some testing though, right? You have a relationship with a lab company. Yeah. Absolutely. So with Rodox, you can't get testing. And this is where we really consider ourselves innovators, disruptors, and try to do things before other people have thought about it. Um, So one of the biggest pushbacks I'll hear from doctors is, well, I want to be able to get lab testing. And that could be for acute care or for um, chronic things like diabetes. So we went the extra mile to set up partnerships where instead of you coming to the doctor's office, you can go to your local lab, get your labs drawn, and now we're taking it to another level and partnering with mobile phlebotomists so that we can come to you and even draw your lab. Yeah. Uh, I really is. I mean, in, in this, this opportunity, this world, like where we're all so busy, whether it's family, whether it's work, what it is, it's like really, I think, creating um, less of a barrier to people taking care of themselves is really essential. So that's really awesome to hear. So it, in terms of physician autonomy and wellness, like what do you think physicians gain from participating in telemedicine as like an adjunct or even a replacement for their current practices? So oftentimes I'll get patients who will come and see me and it's not because I'm a better doctor or anything like that, but they'll say, you know, you're the first um, doctor who really explained this to me this way, or you're the first doctor that took the time to stop and talk to me. And I always take that opportunity to educate my patients and say, that doesn't mean that doctor was a bad doctor. That doctor really didn't have enough time to talk Mm -hmm. to you during that visit. Well, when you look at why that doctor didn't have enough time, it's because they had to wait for you to fill out the forms in the front, then for someone to do your vitals in the room. So that 15 minute block that someone gave them to see you, all of it got eat, it got eaten up in um, administrative tasks. So if instead you and the doctor had those full 15 minutes, I get to do a better job. So as doctors, we want to do, we want to talk to our patients. We don't want to feel like we're doing a crapshoot when it comes to your healthcare. So doctors, one thing you get out of it is more time to spend with your patient, more time to educate your patient, more time to do what you love to do, which is just practice medicine, you and the patient one-on-one. You are cutting out the middleman with telemedicine. And we, as doctors, the second thing I would say doctors get out of it is we sacrifice so much. We spend 12, 13, sometimes more years in college, depending on your specialty. And now here you are, it's time to practice. Well, the time to practice coincides with the time to have a family. So we're at the height of our professional career at the same time that we're having children. Many of us are getting married. And there are all of these articles on burnout, burnout, burnout. Doctors need better work-life balance. Well, telemedicine helps you to create that. If I told you that you could see the same amount of patients in four days versus five, so now you can take a day off, it's like, Mm -hmm. wow, like, that's amazing. Well, that's what telemedicine does, right? Because there's not as much paperwork. There's not that time in the office. So you really can practice more efficiently. I would say those are the two top things. Um, I do find, and I don't shy away from the conversation, that a lot of doctors are afraid to talk about money. You know, it's like if we talk about money, then we're not, we somehow must not be driven for patient care and patient outcomes. And that's simply not true. Um, There was an article published um, in the Becker Spine Institute um, journal or their online website saying that, you know, the network of doctors is compared to their loan burden is really low. 
So also telemedicine is an opportunity for you to decrease your overhead costs, which means you can take more home and you can provide better care for your family, pay off your loans. And I think it's okay to know that it's okay to make more money. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so tell me a little bit about like, what is different about Rodox than other telemedicine programs? Oh, I think I may have lost you. Uh, let's see here. I think I lost her, guys. Um, so anyway, what I think is amazing about Rodox is that it is not opportunity for you to have your own business, create your own business, and um, and to really forge forward um, without the middleman, which again is I think something that is super, super important in terms of wellness and autonomy and kind of creating our opportunity as physicians and creating that um, opportunity for um, us to get back into the relationship with our patients. So I want to say thank you to Dr. Rowe for joining us today. Um, you can find um, Rowe Docs um, on Facebook and on Instagram. I will link in the comments about how to find them. You can go, I will also put a link for a Rodox um, website where you can actually get on today and find yourself a doctor if you want them in the next 10 minutes you can find one. Um, so um, thanks for joining us Dr. Rowe and opening things up for us on this topic. You can find me at Holist on all social media platforms at Holist Health and the website www.holisthealth.com. Reach out if you want in on this new weight wellness program. There is nothing like it out there, guys. It is really exciting and really unique mindset, lifestyle, weight science, mindfulness, and co personal coaching.